Hi everyone, we had a really good question about how to calculate negative cash flow with different numbers in today's market from one of the YouTube comments from a prior video. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to fill out the cash flow model and I wanna make sure that everybody understands this is a very easy to use tool. It looks worse and scarier than it actually is. However, if you don't have an accounting or a finance background, you're not used to spreadsheets, I'm gonna get into it and I'm gonna go over the smaller details that might be a little bit confusing. This particular person had a really good question. So in their case, they're looking at a $650,000 condo that they wanna buy using um, refinancing of their current home. So effectively, they're not gonna use any cash, they're just gonna use whatever they can borrow against their house to buy this, and they wanna see whether or not the numbers make sense. So let's get into the actual details. Um, Daniel, rent comes out to 28,750, what they're estimating, which is just around 2,400 a month. You have your uh, maintenance costs, miscellaneous, which is I think is a little bit high. You have property tax, insurance also feels a little bit high. Maybe they're in Vancouver, where I know insurance is usually higher for condos. Now, here's how he talks about, he or she talks about the 650,000 refinancing at 3.2 interest rate. Here's the part that there's a bit of a discrepancy, but we'll work it through in this model. So they're saying that if they refinance the 650,000 through their home, the interest portion on that amount at 3.2 percent will be 1733 or $21,000 a year. So once you back that out of these, all of these expenses out of the revenue that you're going to get, he ends up with negative cash flow even then when he's just backing out, he or she is backing out the just the interest portion. So obviously, um, <clears throat> when your net operating income is negative only, does his example work? Well, in that case, it does not work. It makes absolutely no sense to do this. But let's dive into the numbers just to better understand what is happening here. Using RBC Mortgage Calculator, which is probably one of the easier ones to use for these types of analysis, I did a 30-year variable mortgage at 3.2% for 650, pretty much what we're talking about here. This is the amortization table in terms of how much interest is being paid in the first five years and then how much principal. And I arrived to just two basic ratios, so 58% of my mortgage payment is going into interest. With this example, 41% is going into paying down my principal. Now, we do have a bit of a discrepancy between what uh, the user said and what I'm getting. However, um, I think for the purpose of this exercise, it's not that relevant. Uh, it will hash itself out, I think. Maybe there's just a disconnect in how we're calculating cer certain things. So, purchase price 650, rent 2396. Here are all the amounts that were stated. And then he or she said that they had arrived at $485 negative cash flow when they're just subtracting the interest only portion. The interest portion is $1644. The negative cash flow I'm getting is $91. If now the real the real life negative cash flow number is actually $1258 because you have to pay down the principal as well. Just before we even go any further, I think this is obviously a very difficult sell. Is it attractive to me? Is this something I would do? Uh, at face value, absolutely not. It makes no sense. The only way something like this would make sense is if you're getting it considerably below value or below market value. And that could be maybe you're buying a condo with a tenant in it that's very difficult to sell. You know that that condo is maybe 720 without a tenant, but you're taking on the risk of trying to get rid of that tenant and you're getting it for 650. Whatever the case may be, these things happen all the time. Deals can be had. But if you're buying at market value with these numbers, this is an absolute no-go, even though the model itself will show that you're going to make some money. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. So just to recap, the discrepancy we have is that the person assumes that they're going to be out $485 a month. I'm seeing about $100. doesn't matter. The numbers are not very attractive, but this is how we calculated them. Now let's get into the actual model. So here we are, purchase price of 650, assume nothing down. So the entire amount is basically debt. Interest rate is 3.2. Everything's been updated with the numbers I was given. And then appreciation has been kept at 3.5, right? So it's still showing me here that we're going to make money. So there's IRR of 13%, which is actually not bad. And there's an NPV of almost 90 grand. My problem with this is that while these numbers show well, these are the type of numbers I'd want to see at the very least with 20% down. So for example, let's break this down. Let's bring this back to 20. 
at 20% the way a normal investor would take this on or not a normal investor, but a more just more run of the mill deal with 20% down, you're now into single digits IRR. And personally with 20% down, if you're in single digits IRR, to me, that's a no go, you have to be at the very least in the low teens, in my opinion, and obviously the higher, the better. But in this case, this is a no go. Now going back to the example, keeping at, at zero money down, there's still money to be made, especially the NPV is at $90,000. Again, I find that here there is no insulation for risk. So if the market continues to go down, like we're currently experiencing, this can get wiped out fairly quickly. If interest rates go up, you can get wiped out really quickly. So there's no room for error here. Despite it showing you're still going to make money, this entire money composition is made up of the appreciation. That is how you're making money. It's from the appreciation. Now, the appreciation here is conservative, but here's here's the punchline. On a deal like this, unless you're getting it below market or you feel that rents are going to increase substantially in this particular building or unit, it makes no sense to go ahead. You have to have some sort of a wedge where you can force value. So you're either forcing value by knowing something like you can get more rent because rents are going up or you have to take on the risk of getting rid of a tenant, which could turn into, you know, six months to 12 months to evict if they're difficult. So I hope that's helpful. If you have further questions, I can elaborate more. Uh, again, the, the model is not difficult. You're looking for just the very basic metrics to fill in here. How much your down payment is, your interest, your maintenance fees, property taxes, and everything else. And then you're looking at the IRR. Again, this model, what it's used for and the way I use it is I only use it to compare properties at a point in time. And the keyword here is point in time. Comparing this six months from now, it's not going to make much sense because, again, so many things would have changed. Rents would have changed. Prices would have changed. Interest rates would have changed. A lot of things would change. So I wouldn't, you know, obviously I would have a better idea how it compares to a deal now, but it, it serves no purpose for anybody looking at this because it doesn't help me to know that deals were better or worse in the past. All I want to know is from the deals I'm evaluating right now, which one is the best. And I think that's the only thing that matters for us. Thank you so much for watching. If you have further questions, please comment below and I'll be happy to answer them.